Hi, good morning. I think we've just got a last few people joining us, so we'll just give them a minute to um, to get into the meeting. I can also, um, Ursa team, can you? I can see that people are asking for the link. Um, we're getting some late emails. If anybody could help with that. Yes, I'm, I'm answering them, Elizabeth. Lovely, thank you. <clears throat> I'll just give, give those people a minute. <clears throat> OK, I think um, we can make a start. So um, good morning, everybody. Um, this is the third event that Ursa has run since we've known about um, the UK Share Prosperity Fund prospectus and the investment plans that local authorities and lead authorities should now be working on. Um, I think one of the things worth saying, we've also done our joint events with NCBO, with New Philanthropy Capital, and yesterday I listened in to the event I think some of you were on that was run by the National Lottery for BBO providers. Um, <clears throat> we have changed um, what we were going to do this morning slightly. We were going to put people into groups based on geography, and we just suddenly realised through the conversations we were having with Ursa members and with others that it was probably um, a little bit too early to do that. So um, we've got an agenda where we're going to look at the current issues. I'm really aware that on the call um, this morning that we've got some really large organisations and some very small ones. Um, so we're going to try and make sure the discussion is inclusive of everybody. Um, and I think that if we just start with some of the, with the kind of a conversation about contributing to the investment plans, which um, I will start. Um, those of you who don't know me, sorry, I'm Elizabeth Taylor, Chief Executive Ursa. Um, we we did ask um, DWP, DLOC, DFE colleagues if they could join us again this morning, um, but they felt they hadn't got any updates from what they said to us previously, but I think we do need to try and get them along okay. next time. OK, so it seems to be a really mixed landscape out there. It seems to be the case that some local authorities have got their act together, they've sent out design project forms, they are connecting with local organisations on the investment plan. Um, some are working on the investment plan but are doing less partnership work and less consultation at this stage, and some don't seem to have um, started the process at all. So you may be aware that Ursa have written to the Chief Executive and the Economic Regeneration um, Partners at every local authority, and we have asked for their UK SBF lead. And that in itself has been quite telling because we couch that in a conversation around we and our members can help you with the investment plan and people and skills part of the future and with your voluntary sector consideration now. Um, I think that on the whole, those who'd appointed somebody responded to us. And uh, what is telling is how many people don't have that lead there. Uh, although, of course, some local authorities have got that inbox that is things like UK SBF at X Council. So, a really, really mixed landscape. <clears throat> and um, what we are doing at the moment is we're collecting the uh, project forms that some of the more proactive local authorities are, are now putting out 
And Ursula is going to make an example project template that's very employment specific. And we're going to share that with all our local authority contacts, the ones that are quieter in particular, because again, we'll couch this in our offer of help, um, but we'll make that available to you as well. But one of the overwhelming things that we realised um, through listening to the BBA old call, being on our own um, conversations is we really need to get out there to take action and to do it now and to be as loud as we can. Yeah, because um, it is not evident that every local authority understands the voluntary sector consideration, understands that they could continue to fund provision next year. Um, and not everybody is talking to us in the world about employment and skills. So um, I think, first of all, what I'd really like to do is to um, kind of just get the temperature in the room, really, um, because what we're looking for today is what Ursa needs to be doing next to help you. Yeah. And so we need some very local organisation based information. Um, also, <clears throat> we will close with some of the things that we think we can do immediately and some of the things we can be doing on Employability Day. So um, let's focus first on the contribution to investment plans. And I'd really like to hear from people in the meeting um, if, if and where people are talking to local authorities about the investment plan. So can we do the hand raising? Um, I don't know what's going on. I can see some hands, so let me make a start. Uh, Evelyn Rimmer. Hi, morning, everybody. Um, I work with Centrepoint that we are a charity across England supporting homeless young people. And particularly, I'm the interim head of learning at the moment for Centrepoint Works, which supports the young people to progress into uh, jobs uh, through training and uh, employment support. So we have relationships, existing relationships with some local authorities in the areas. So um, I've had a couple of meetings this week with two of them, one in Hartlepool, one in Durham, and they are both saying at the moment their investment plan, it's very high level. Um, in fact, mainly a financial spreadsheet at the moment, but still really keen to talk to providers about what potentially the offer could be. But bearing in mind, if it's it's going to be over the next two years, it's quite difficult at the moment to actually plan ahead for those two years because we don't know what the situation is going to be. But um, so far, but th this is the ones that we actually have relationships with at the moment. It's a little bit more difficult to get the foot in the door with the ones that we maybe don't have the, the right contact there. So again, that would be really helpful to get those contact names and details that we can make that approach. Okay, thank you. I, I, I will just come in then because one of the things that's said, been said to Ursa is that people are putting in really high level plans. And I would say high level plans, I can understand why, but make sure there's people and skills in there. Make sure there's relationships with providers and relationships with employers. So, um, yeah, that's very interesting to hear. Um, I saw another hand and then it disappeared. Does anybody else want to come in? Petra, morning. Morning. Um, yeah, we've we've tried to make contact as well. It's uh, proving difficult. Um, I think after the last meeting, I emailed the Welsh um, DWP representative um, because we were told that they would have links to the local leads. And she did reply to me, but she said she's asked for the leads and she hasn't got that information and that she would send it out as soon as she did. And she was hoping that was going to be early last week and I still haven't heard anything. So things are moving slowly with our um, closest local authority, Merthyr Tidville. There is a lead, we've been <clears> told, um, but there's been no engagement with the sector. We were told that they are looking to engage with the sector but there's been nothing coming out. So I think it's great that there are some sort of design um, plans coming out, but there's been nothing from ours. I mean, it'd be great if, if the government had something that 
all local authorities use or some sort of structure? Because again, are we going to be in the position where we have to complete different formats, different things, different information for each organization, or each local authority we, we want to engage with? Because as most providers, we work across more than one local authority. So changing this funding mechanism now to more than one um, one you know, districts changing the type of areas we work in is, is going to be difficult. OK. Right, we'll pick up on some of these things. Um, Simon Campbell. Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, Simon Campbell, Prince's Trust. Um, a bit like Petra, we deliver across a number of locations, have a range of, you know, ERDF, ESF and YEI contracts. So this is naturally a big, a big picture piece for us, but just a couple of throwaways. I mean, we've been in conversation with Greater Manchester Combined Authority about a project um, that we're delivering there and how that would transition across. Um, similarly, um, West of England Combined Authority have sent out a questionnaire which has been quite useful for us. We've been able to include information about um, track record, the kind of things um, we'd like to see, you know, in, in, in SPF. Um, in the transition and similarly West Mids Combined Authority. So some of some of the bigger players have, have have reached out to us already and we've been able to respond. But again, it's it, it's trying to overlay, you know, where we've got existing contracts, where our natural footprint is um, and, and, and how we try and retain that to the best of our ability um, and then work out things like consortiums and, and all the rest of it. So there's <laughs> there's still a number of questions where we're busy sort of triaging inside the tent. Um, but yeah, great great to hear from others on just, um, you know, where, where these conversations are warm, where things are happening um, quite quickly. And I guess the, the other thing from my perspective is this sort of, you know, anything that anyone's picking up around the implementation side of it, you know, when do we realistically think that, you know, grant agreement letters might be signed, when might we start to see, um, you know, uh, the income start to flow in, you know, I guess obviously there's that bridging gap for any ESF projects that, that it might be at risk. So just that kind of stuff really keen to hear from others on the call on that one. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you, Simon. Um, um, we'll go to Paul and then if anybody wants to come back on some of the things that Simon and Petra have raised. So, Paul. <clears throat> Thanks, Elizabeth. Um, just just a quick one, I suppose. I, I would say that the area where, where we're getting most traction at the moment is around the Multiply programme. That partly reflects us as an organisation <clears throat> that we're, we're a specialist provider of, of English and maths. Um, so we've had some responses there. Uh, I've had a direct contact with Trafford Council, who are our local authority, about wanting to engage with us further on that. And we've just completed a survey for Lancashire, which has been uh, sent out by the Workers' Educational Association. And within their communication, they seem to be reasonably confident that there would be multiply money available sort of sometime this year. In fact, possibly fairly soon this year, which is, which is hopefully positive. But as regards the local investment plans, really very little response. We've, we've tried to engage through all the various routes as has been discussed at uh, previous uh, events such as this and yeah the the event's been sort of noticeable by its absence uh, sorry the response has been sort of noticeable by its absence really okay thank you does anybody else want to come in at this point nicola white then hi yeah so nicola from uh, patrick trust um, so we are, we've got existing provision in Cambridgeshire and Essex. Um, I don't have a great deal to kind of add as such, apart from the fact that we've um, got some meetings lined up with the combined authority, so CAMS and Peterborough, um, although at the moment it keeps getting delayed. So hopefully that will um, take place at some point. Um, and then also just a uh, shout out to Ursa. Um, Henry was very useful in getting us some leads at um, sending us the lead for Basildon District Council. So we'll be, um, we've contacted them this week, just waiting to hear back from them. But obviously you guys do have a list if people are, um, uh, you know, wanting to find out who they are locally. Yeah, and I would say about that list, um, we are populating it, Henry's sticking in there, trying to keep asking, keep asking, because we were aware when we did a little bit of um, 
mystery shoppers, shall I say. We were mystery shoppers and we rang some local authorities, um, not saying we were so just pretending we were a local organisation, and asked for local authority leads and people just didn't know what we were talking about, hadn't named people. So that we decided to write to the, the chief executives teams and the economic regeneration team um, if they had one. Um, so Henry's populating that and if you have leads it is worth just sending them to policy at URSA because we could try and build up a, a, that sort of that network. Um, we asked um, Department of Level and Up Housing and Communities if they had a, lead, a list of leads. We asked for two reasons. One, we didn't necessarily think they were going to give us the list. They, we thought they'd hide behind GDPR but <laughs> we were curious did the list exist? Did they know? Um, we weren't, I'm not satisfied the list did exist, they just said it was a GDPR issue and they'd try and get it to us at some point, but we have been given the leads who are working on SBF at the DWP and DLUC and we've had that in the last couple of days and I'm just trying to clarify at the moment whether that's a list that Ursa can see or a list we can share, um, but we will definitely have them at the, at the next meeting. Um, so, yeah, anybody else want to come in? OK, so I would just we'll move on because really what I'm trying to do is just get a picture of where everybody's up to. Um, I think it is worth saying as we move on now to I want to find out people's experience about using the voluntary sector consideration. Um, one of the things that Ursa's has done in the last week is with others, we have raised with some members of parliament um, the possibility of asking questions about is the money allocated for the voluntary sector consideration. So what the voluntary sector consideration is, there's a little bit of a workaround that means that if provision is delivered by a third sector organisation and they can make a case for that provision and for the need for it to continue to blend in with whatever is in the investment plan on people and skills from 24 onwards. Um, local authorities can spend money on people and skills now. There's two things about this. The, the gap makes organisations very, very vulnerable. And on the BBO call yesterday, there were some really heartfelt contributions made by organisations who didn't know where to go, you know, saying we're delivering a BBO project over 14 local authorities, do we have to make 14 phone calls or whatever? Um, so we actually asked if DLOC, if somebody would come and speak this morning about the voluntary sector consideration and they said there was a diary clash, but we've asked if they will come and we can do a specific meeting on it because again you feel like this clock is ticking down um so we want to take a slightly different approach to this because in some ways um we've got we probably have a little bit more time with getting the right messaging into the investment plans but for organizations that are delivering projects on that cliff edge um we need to be using this so i noticed in the chat somebody asked about what the third sector is. The third sector will be local charities, social enterprises, community interest companies. Yeah, it's basically it's they're, they're trying to get to small local projects that they want to still be in existence in 2024. Um, that was the thinking behind it. Um, so I'd like to kind of hear from you and then I'll tell you about what Earth is going to try and do next around around particularly the voluntary sector consideration but the investment plans and then we'll move on to multiply. So um, Mark Hoder, I think Mark's a new hand and I'm not sure whether Evelyn and Paul are old hands, so old hands. Uh, I'll go to Mark Hoder first. Yeah, sorry if I'm jumping in, Elizabeth, in front of others. Um, I, I asked a DLUC official who was on a business services association call the other day because we're members of that at Shore Trust as well. I asked him about the voluntary sector consideration. I said, will there be enough money for councils to fund everything they want to fund that meets the criteria in terms of VCSE, people and skills, 
projects and he said it's a good question but it's too early to tell and it depends on what their priorities are what their investment decisions are but there's not any ring fencing so you know councils can spend as they want to spend they've got that freedom but um you know there's not new money coming in to support that voluntary sector consideration for local authorities it's just the existing budget so yeah that's really useful mark and you know one of the things that somebody said to me is why can't we play this to our advantage and i thought oh, why can't we because if they don't know what to spend on why don't we give them some really like good existing provisions um i think the voluntary sector considerations are really interesting one about how we pitch it because um they have talked about making sure organisations are still in existence, but I think it goes back to some of that messaging we put in the first Ursa bulletins around explain the need in their communities, explain the people that you serve. Yeah, put that for at the forefront. But I would definitely at this point be telling them about your organisation and the numbers of staff that you have working on these provisions, because I think that's not always known. Yeah. So um, anyway, over to Sarah Ellis. Hi, sorry guys. I'm Sarah from DaVentio Housing Trust in Derby. We're a BBO delivery partner um, in, in our area. So far, we've engaged with South Derbyshire um, for the UK shared prosperity and looking at the multiplier for the county and the local authorities have been quite clear that there just simply isn't the same amount of budget for what like the, the BBO contracts are and they're telling us just to prepare ourselves for that so it's just worrying as we can demonstrate our need we can demonstrate how much we cost you know because that's all in contracts now at the moment and the numbers just simply aren't adding up and that's just one ESS strand and we know there's other projects so that's very difficult and we're trying to come together as across the D2NT region and you know the leads on our project are promoting that our stakeholder managers are advocating for our services but just really worrying and as Liz was yesterday it's quite critical and crucial for staff and services at the moment so it's kind of looking as if you know can DWP assist on some of these contracts in terms of funding or you know is there any kind of work going that you know lateral thinking okay thank you um if we go to Morgan and I'll pick up a little bit on that thanks Elizabeth um uh, yeah Morgan also from Trust, but um just picking up on the on the voluntary sector consideration so I think whilst there's provision for that within um, the guidance and there's, I guess there's the opportunity for lead authorities to do it. From what from what I hear, I don't think it will just be a case of extending projects at risk and new SPF funding will need to reflect current local need rather than just continuation of projects that might, um, I guess in many cases were defined and contracted pre-pandemic. Um, so I guess that that comes back to the point of yeah, everyone needing to be showcasing the benefits of what's being delivered throughout their delivery, reminding lead authorities of the impact of the work that's at risk. Um, because yeah, I think very much from what I hear, it will be you know there there will need to be a process to look at any new projects reflecting what the current need is, which you you would expect. But I think with that comes the need to make sure that lead authorities are really aware of the good practice that's happening. Okay. Can't see any hands, so shall I just sort of tell you some of the thinking about what we think we're going to do next at Ursa? Um, I think that we will produce a kind of um, we, well, we're going to look at the what local authorities are putting out in terms of the project forms, and we're going to design an example sort of template. Um, you'd be able to use that in a couple of ways. You could use it to structure an email that you may want to send to your local authority lead, the chief executive, the lead at the combined authority, you might want to send to an MP, you might want to send it to the elected leader of the council, the leader of the opposition group, you know, whoever you feel fit in your area that just spells out what you're doing, we'll give you some structure to do that. And um, we also um, want to start 
collecting some information that we can use um, because some of you will know that we've had some um, national and specialist trade press um, media coverage. So we've had co we've had coverage in the Observer and on the Independent Online and also in things like FE News. But the benefit of FE News, it gets picked up elsewhere. Um, and uh, I say this with a smile. A, mis a mystified smile, I should say, that, you know, in January, I had something in FE News that then ended up in the Financial Times and the Los Angeles Times. And I was like, what? Anyway, um, we will continue to do that um, media work in earnest. But what we would really like to do is, yes, we did the mind the gap um, thing, but it'd be really good if we had like ready some um, information that we can use about the projects you deliver, the vulnerable groups that you're working with, the local need, and then something that I think ticks the box with the government is about the needs of employers in your area and how you prepare people for vacancies, whether they are people over 50, women returners, people with care responsibilities, young people that are neat. Um, those things are outside the Job Centre Plus landscape that we've always delivered using European funded money. So we'd like some really good examples and some narrative that we can use. So we'll um, we'll send you a template for that. Um, and then the other thing uh, I'd really want to flag up is the 17th of June, that Friday, is Employability Day. Use that as an opportunity to get people to visit your centres to develop, you know, to visit outreach locations, to meet participants, clients, whatever you call them, um, to really, really highlight the work you do. Showcase the work and then reinforce it with the messaging of how vulnerable these provisions are. So um, I would say if you can do something on the 17th of June and there's a ERSA pack that's already gone out, but we could put in the chat here now, um, invite the leader of your council, invite your local MPs, um, invite ward councillors if it's very local and specific, invite anybody that you think you need to get on side. And you might also want to invite the local radio station, the local paper, anything else that happens online in your area. Just try and showcase what you do. You know, this is our opportunity to be as loud and um, as positive as we can be whilst telling people how worrying the situation is. Um, and I think the other thing we're going to do at Ursa is we're going to make a list of who we think are some national key decision makers. So ministers, shadow ministers, um, we're looking at Scotland and Wales as well. It's not just about UK government, although I think we're on different timelines in different places, but we'll soon be having variations of this elsewhere. Um, so let's really try and use Employability Day as best we can. Um, and then the other thing before we move on to just a quick catch up about where we're all up to with Multiply is to say that um, with other organisations, um, including the National Lottery as BBO funders, we are, we are asking, the letter is going to go this afternoon, for me, a meeting with Mims Davis as Minister for Employment and with Neil O'Brien, who seems to be within Michael Goh's team, the most senior person who's working on UK SBF. We are going to ask them to meet with Ursa and the BBO team and some providers. Yeah. Um, when we reached out to Mims Davis a month or so ago, she was saying, oh, you need to talk to people in DLUC now. But I believe that we need to go back to Mims and say to her, you are the Minister for Employment and you are losing providers that are in your portfolio, regardless of who is going to fund them in the future. So I think some of the things I've heard I've heard at this forum, I heard on the BBO call yesterday, the private conversations that I've had with ERSA members. Um, we need to articulate those 
And we, I think, again, we've got this quite short window now. So that um, request will be sent today. Um, and I really hope that we get that opportunity. So if you would like to come with Ursa to talk to a couple of government ministers, please send an email to policy at ursa.org.uk. Um, I will reach out to the 24 organisations that came to the round table we, we ran a year ago, um, talking about what we'd learnt from SVF because um, that was that was a really good representative group. But don't feel that you don't have your chance. Please do come. Um, and then I think the other thing to say is that Henry Fox from Ursa and I met with Mike Amesbury in uh, London on Monday. And Mike Amesbury is the shadow minister for local government. And um, some of you may know this, but before he was an MP, Mike was a careers advisor at Connections. So he understands our world. You might not know all the detail of delivering a BBO project or an ESIF project or whatever, but he knows the importance of what we do. So that was a really, really useful meeting. And um, we raised with him one initial question um, for, that we wanted him to ask, which was around what budget is there? What amount of money is there, there for the voluntary sector consideration? And he was like, yeah, that's I'm going to ask that. Yeah, I'll ask that. And I know that others have lined up other MPs to do that. Um, we also talked to him about some of those key relationships that we need to have because we're at a point now where local authorities are the new commissioner. Yeah. Um, so um, we discussed with Mike about our conversations with the local government association, with the association of district councils um, and councils for voluntary service. So the other players that we need to be talking to now. So um, I'm just sort of trying to put it out there that we are um, we're, we're doing what we can on that sort of political strategic level. But people like um, as well as having people like Mims Davis, Neil O'Brien, Chloe Smith from the government to visit people on Employability Day, we will identify people like Mike Amesbury, like Ali McGovern, like Lisa Nandy, um, other people that we think are strategic. So we're going to try and get that list out in the coming days. And if you think we do, uh, if you think they're close to you, their constituency is close enough to you for you to get them to come in and see your provision. That's a perfect match because we deliberately do employability day on a Friday. We do it on a Friday because that's when people are back in their constituencies. Um, but we need to try and get the invites out in the coming days because they'll soon be booked up for what they're doing on the 17th of June. But I think a little bit of that political influence and then some really good media coverage alongside it um, would be useful. And I think just before we move on to multiply, just one final thing. Anything that you feel is a big issue for you or anything that you feel is um, some progress. I don't think we might not be quite at the, over the line of success yet, but anything that you're doing that you think this is making progress, this is good, please let us know at URSA because um, what we're really trying to do is help the whole sector crack this, yeah? And sometimes it's really hard knowing, um, you know, where things are up to. So. We were a bit kind of worried about nobody's seen a template, nobody's sent anything out yet. And then we see something that Blackburn with Darwin had put out. And this morning, Henry went on a call. He's going to tell me I've got the local authority wrong. I think it was the West Riding of Yorkshire. I'll tell me something completely different. But he went on another local call where they are, they are putting something out for organisations to submit info. So it's coming in drips, but get that, um, get that, stuff into us and then the other thing is i am aware that at this point earth has been very england specific it's been quite voluntary sector consideration specific um i think that's because we really need to get these messages out there now yeah there's a real call to action about that 
But alongside that, the investment plan deadline is coming up soon. So let's not miss what we need to have in those plans, even if it is high level. Let's get it so that as soon as their high level plans signed off, they know the local partners they need to talk to immediately. That's us. Yeah. And oh, that's you. Um, so let's be doing that. And the other thing is for the bigger national members of URSA, um, obviously, uh, SPF is going to be quite local, although it's, you know, combined authority level, it's on big geographies. Um, there's a part for everybody in this. And um, so I think it's really important that even if we are just concentrating on that very local stuff because of the voluntary sector consideration, um, we want we want the bigger providers on board with us as well. So um, if you're on the call from one of the larger providers, um, if you get to a point where you know that there's a particular area of the country that's going to be your focus, your area of interest, um, please let us know that too. Um, you can uh, say this is just for Ursa to know or say to us, we're quite happy to be a bit wider that we're trying to build supply chains over here or whatever. OK. So if I don't see any more raised hands about contributing to investment plans or the voluntary sector consideration. Um, I am curious to hear from people about whether people are making um, progress on the multiply contracts. I get very distracted by the chat. Apologies, I was distracted then. So yeah, multiply. Is anybody involved in multiply bids? Anything anybody wants to share? And again, of course, this has a shorter time scale than the investment plan so there's a need to be involved now looking for hands okay so it is worth saying that after the last meeting when we had the representatives from the department for education they offered to come back they couldn't come back today but again if people let us know if you're interested in multiplying you want a ursa multiply meeting we will reach out to the dfe but again could you email policy at ursa so we kind of see how many people that's likely to be but anyway i can see jess your hands up do you want to come in hi elizabeth oh, yeah. uh, I, it was actually a question if, if that's okay around the multiply and um, so social enterprise kent have done um a lot of work with uh, supporting people with a sort of um, budgeting and all of those kind of um, maths skills to apply as part of their kind of employability work. Um, my question really is, if we were to go to Kent County Council with that as a kind of a package, um, which is what we're kind of thinking of, so um, and we've got some accredited courses that we're running as well, is that the sort of approach we need to be taking? I would it up with kind I, of real life skills. I think you should do that and do it now. Send send them that. Now they then because it'll be different everywhere. They may then come back to you and yeah. say, oh, we've got, you know, we want need you to go through this process, we need that expression of interest, whatever. But yes, if you're delivering anything that's around maths and English, basic skills, key skills, whatever we call it, um, you need to tell. You need to tell those yeah. authorities that oh. are bid for multiply now. Yeah. OK, and sorry, I know I should know this, uh, but I'm just getting sorry. muddled with the two deadlines. We, what's the deadline for the multiply? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that. Now I need to scroll is, over there. I thought, it, um, is it the end of June? I think yeah, it is. In my head, it's the end of June, and I apologise because I've tidied up my office so well, I've taken the piece of paper down. That I've, <laughs> is there anybody yeah. on the call who can shout out the deadline so that I'm not sat here feeling embarrassed? I'd go for end of June. We'll look that up in a minute. Yeah, yeah. I, I think in my head, in my head, I had the end of June, but I just wanted to double check that because there's quite a few dates being banded around. But yeah, Absolutely. okay. If we keep talking, um, I shall look in my old notebook. Yeah, to make sure right. not tell the wrong thing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Maybe we could send out after this as well uh, anything we've got on Multiply that we think is useful for you to have. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Um, but that was a good prompt because I'm looking at some of the notes that I took from um, 
conversations I've had uh, like offline with with officials at the three departments that we've been talking to. So yeah, I think my final thing to say is that I was told by somebody who's very close to the national work on all this that even the the combined authorities, the MCAs are finding the engagement difficult. So let's make it easy for them. Don't assume they're going to come to you, go to them. I was also told um, that we should be looking at how URSA members in geographies can work together. And, um, and, and I talked to the team at URSA about this and we were going to put people in virtual rooms this morning. Um, we then realised we're not actually at that stage yet, but I think we will do that based on um, where the combined authorities are, where we think there's clusters of local authorities to do some local stuff. Um, but I think the really big thing right now is to flag at risk, what's at risk now, how it would feed in to years two and three, um, talk all the time about additionality, and the vulnerable groups you work with, that you don't rely on referrals through Job Centre Plus, that you engage with people, that everything you do is very bespoke to a local area. Those were the other things I was asked to pass on. And to highlight things like if you work with people over 50, if you work with young people that are neat, if you work with people with care and responsibilities, um, all those sort of specialisms that add value to core employment offers. We don't want anybody to go away from this at the local authority level or, um, you know, at a strategic level that um, think that this will all be covered by Restart or JETS or Work and Health Programme. We've got to spell out the difference about what the European Social Fund provisions have made. OK, so, um, what I'd say is we've put out a few requests. Um, we're going to send out some notes of the requests. We'll ask you to send things to policy at URSA. We want people to think about if we manage to um, push that door open with Mims Davis and Neil O'Brien, would you want to join us? Um, think about who you can host on Employability Day. We'll send a list of who we think are some of the hot targets for Employability Day and see if you can get them to come along. Um, I would also say that a few years ago, and isn't it sad we were doing this three or four years ago, on Employability Day, I just turned up at Jake Berry at that point, was Minister for the Northern Powerhouse and had some Brexit responsibility that included SBF. And I just went to his surgery on Employability Day because we couldn't get him to visit us. So I thought, OK, I will visit you. So some of you may need to be a bit more, more proactive and go the other way. Um, but going to people's surgeries now, that's not, a, you know, just try and think about all the things that we can be doing and think about all the things that you need us to help us with. And the final thing I'd say is, <laughs> having not been able to answer what Jess just, Jessica just asked me, but there are no silly questions, yeah? I think that we're navigating some really like uncharted water here. So ask us things, email policy, tell us things you need, ask if there's things that we can raise that you can't, we'll do that. But if you get information, share that information with us. Um, we are continuing to work with National Council for Voluntary Organisations and New Philanthropy Capital. We work closely with the Business Services Association that Mark Oda mentioned. Um, we're just trying to, have a really sort of broad approach to this. And then I think the other thing to say is we will be having um, in the near future Scotland specific and Wales specific meetings about SPF. Yeah. So um, just bear that in mind. But I wouldn't want people to think that this forum was England only. I just think we're working with some different timelines in the early years that make doing things in nations slightly different at this moment. OK, um, so this meeting, 
um, was put in the diary slot that we have for the community renewal fund. So unless there's anything else about sharing prosperity, what I would quite like to do is um, just have a very short break. And those of you that are with us who are delivering community renewal fund um, to actually just come back and be with us at, at 10 to 12. And then we'll move on to a community 